Hello, and welcome to another tutorial video here from Zanata Consulting. My name is Tyler Colt, and in this video, we're going to be covering each of the G Suite integrations that are available for Zoho CRM. So that's going to include Google Mail, Calendar, Contacts, and Google Drive. So before we jump in, I do want to ask if you find this video useful, please be sure to like and subscribe down below. So that really does help us out. And if you have any feedback or questions that come up throughout this video, leave those down in the comment section below as we try to read and respond to each and every one of those on our weekly podcast, Azaz. Without any further ado, let us jump on into the walkthrough. So right out of the gate, I'm going to start here by connecting the Gmail or email integration to Zoho CRM using IMAP. IMAP is a pretty standard way to connect email accounts from one place to another. So here I'm in CRM. I can go into the setup, which is a little cog in the top right hand corner. I can go into the email tab. And here under email configuration and this little email subcategory, we'll have the ability to configure our connected inbox. So this is really just a way to make sure that any emails that you're sending directly from your inbox over in Gmail are going to show up on the CRM side underneath the appropriate lead, contact, account, and deal. So here I'm going to go ahead and click get started. Now these are all of the options that are available by default. Um, so Zoho Mail, uh, Gmail, Yahoo Mail, surprisingly, uh, Office 365, and Outlook. Um, the process for integrating most of these is about the same, but we're going to go ahead and do Gmail for our purposes here. Now we have a couple different ways to do the integration. You've got IMAP, POP, and API. You pretty much always want to use IMAP. POP is kind of getting phased out and API is probably more than most people need. So we're going to go ahead and do this with an IMAP integration. Click configure. Now this is going to pop up a little window here where I'll we'll need to sign in to a Google account. So here I'm going to use this success at Zanata. Um, this is like a support inbox that we have internally. So I'm going to go ahead and connect that. Now it may ask you to sign in here. It has my credentials saved. The only difference is you might have to just put in your Gmail password at this point. Um, but because I have it saved, I don't need to do that for the purposes of our walkthrough. So now I've gone through and connected that. It's going to spin. It's going to refresh. Now we have our email integrated at the baseline. Now we do need to make a couple uh, choices here. So the big one is how do we want to share these emails? Do I want to keep all my communications private? Do I want to share everything I send with everybody? Or do I want to go in and put some specific rules on a record by record basis? Most people are going to want to make this public. It's doing a pop up here, right? And this is actually a great pop up because it's warning you that once you connect this email account, all your emails are going to come in. Right. And that could even include internal emails if somebody adds a fellow employee as a contact into CRM. So what we always want to do is take this exclude domains and exclude your primary domain here. This is going to make life a whole lot easier and it's going to make sure that people are not able to essentially view emails in CRM that are only for internal you know, purposes. Right. Those just don't need to come in here. Now, for the purposes of demos, I'm going to show this with multiple Zanata domains. So I'm going to remove this for this demo. You should keep it in, right? So just add whatever your domain is into that field, and you'll be good to go in terms of people seeing things that they shouldn't. Outside of that, you're pretty much good to go. So a lot of these server details, this is all going to get defined for you. You don't need to worry about it. You can add multiple from addresses via this UI if you'd like. We're not going to worry about that for right now. And from there, we can just go ahead and click Update and we are good to go. Here, I'll show a couple other little sections on this page just so you see them. Email sharing is kind of a way to go through and see all of the users and if they are connected and if they are, how are they sharing? You know, are they set to private, public, or the custom, uh, you know, sharing settings? Then organization emails, this would be for, you know, maybe you have a hello at zanata.com. You want to connect it as an address you can send from. Um, you can do those via the organization information here. So now that we have that configured, I do want to show a quick example of how this actually works in practice. So here I have an example contact. 
Gmail example at zanata.com. Uh, as you can see, I am not very creative. So that is our email address. Uh, currently, no history of communication with this. It's a new record. I just created it for the purposes of our walkthrough here today. Now, if I go over to Gmail, I can actually email directly to this contact. While you can email directly from CRM, and there's a lot of use cases where you should. For most teams, it's not realistic that all emails are going to be sent exclusively from CRM, right? You might send the initial one to check in on an open deal, but then they respond and you go back and forth via your inbox. So here I can go ahead and compose an email. I'm going to send an example email. Hope all is well. I'd love to do business. And this is just to that exact same email address that exists in our Zoho account now. Let's go ahead and send that. Uh, that email is going to bounce, right? Because that's not a real email address. But the important thing is when I come over to the CRM side of the house, it will have a record of that email being sent to this particular contact. Alrighty, so with that email sent, we can jump back over here to our CRM into this example contact. And we can see that down in that emails related list, we now have that email, right? We've got a log that this was sent, right? Went out here. I can actually reply, reply all, forward this email, continue to work it from within CRM. Um, but the important takeaway is that these emails can sync right in, no problem at all, and will be visible within the leads, contacts, and accounts wherever they are relevant. Now, one thing I do want to highlight, there are some advantages to sending those emails directly from CRM. So one benefit is that if they open or click them, the status can be updated if it's sent from CRM. When you send it directly from Gmail, it doesn't have the ability to know if it's been opened or clicked. So that's why oftentimes people will start the email chain from inside CRM, just so you know if they're engaging on that initial send. Then from there on out, right, you can just communicate natively within your inbox. With that, I think we have covered everything we need to on the Gmail portion of this walkthrough. So let's go ahead and jump on over to the calendar integration. So to get that started, we're gonna go ahead and open up our settings here under the little cog. We're going to jump in to the marketplace section here on the bottom right and go into Google. Now there are two integrations here, calendar and contacts. We're gonna start with the calendar and I'm going to sign in. We're gonna choose our account. Again, it might ask you for a password here, totally okay. You just provide that password and you'll be good to go. Now we can choose which way we wanna sync this, right? A two way, both of them kind of keeping in line, or we can say only push from Zoho to Google or from Google to Zoho, both of those are a-okay. And we're gonna do a two way sync here and we'll save that. And what this will do is if a meeting gets scheduled with a particular contact, you know, using their email address and come in here and book a meeting, call it an example meeting because I'm not very creative. We'll add our guest and we can go ahead and save this. So now because we have the calendar integrated, that meeting will actually show up here inside of the CRM. It might just take a moment to show up on the record. So we're going to take a quick pause and I will uh, show this once it syncs. Alrighty. And now that this is done syncing, we can see over here in the contact record that we have this meeting that pushed over from the Google calendar. Um, looks like I have a time zone difference. So it's showing up as eight here, but this is the meeting that we have booked via Google. Um, so that's one direction, but what happens if we book the meeting from in CRM? Um, so to do that, right, within a contact, we can use the open activities and add a meeting. Call this the CRM booked meeting. We'll book this, let's say, on Friday. I want to make sure we add them as a participant so that they actually get a proper invite. And now we can click save. So I'm going to click send just because, and now we'll see that that meeting gets booked, right? We've got it in invited meetings as well as in the open meetings, you know, so it kind of delineates on the ones that we actually booked from here inside of Zoho. Um, but now looking over to the calendar, 
we'll see that that meeting actually has already showed up on Friday at that time. And that invite has gone out to that contact. At the end of the day, pretty quick and easy process when it comes to the calendar side of things. Again, just know there's sometimes a couple minutes of delay if it's booked onto the Google Calendar. So there is that opportunity for just a couple minutes of delay there. As long as you keep that in mind, it should work out perfectly for you. It'll connect to both the leads and contacts records just based on the matching email address. With that, I think we are ready to jump into the third topic, which will be the contacts integration. All right, so to configure this, we are here in that little setup tab and we're gonna jump into the Google section of the marketplace. Here, we'll go ahead and authenticate our contacts. So it's gonna ask us to do that sign in. We'll go ahead and allow it. And from there, the contact sync is pretty simple. There's just a couple choices we need to make. So first we need to determine from the CRM side, which contacts we want to push over. Um, for me, I'm gonna do all. We also need to decide if we want a two-way or a one-way sync. Now, this is a scenario where I actually normally recommend doing a one-way from Zoho CRM to Google. Um, reason being, you, it's a safe assumption that anyone who's in your CRM you want to have as a contact in Google, but you might have a bunch of like random kind of one-off contacts in Google that you don't really need to sync into Zoho. So oftentimes I like to set it up this way. Um, down here at the bottom, we can determine any fields that we'd like to map, you know, the company name, the phone numbers, you know, the Skype for the, you know, 10 people that are still using it. Um, and we can map those fields between the two applications. So I'll go ahead and click save. Now this sync is in progress and you might wonder, well, you know, why bother, right? Why bother syncing the contacts over? Well, the main reason is that it makes it a lot easier when you're inside of Google to do things related to those contacts, right? So this contact's name, not email address, but name is Gmail example. So when I go to send an email, I can just start typing their name and it will pull up that address. Um, also helps out with the little autofill. So when I do like, hi, it will go ahead and autofill that name rather than just the email that you have available. Um, so it just makes things a little easier on the Google side when you go to send that email, send that calendar invites, um, you know, it just makes it so that even if you do something outside of the CRM, you're still able to kind of get that benefit of already knowing who that person is uh, in the system. The contact sync, as you'd expect, is kind of the simplest out of the three. That's really all we need to do. Just turn it on. Again, the only caveat here is that uh, you generally want to make this a one way just from Zoho CRM over to Google Contacts. So now that we've done those big three, we're gonna jump into the fourth integration, which is for Google Drive. That is gonna live in a different place than the rest of these. So I've gone into my setup and I'll go into the marketplace under all, and I'll search for Google Drive. We'll see that there is an existing plugin uh, available, right, for Google Drive. This is actually built by Zoho and it works pretty well. You know, the, there are some you know reviews that aren't so good, but generally speaking, we've had mostly good experiences using this. Um, you know, it's not as flexible as maybe like a custom work drive integration, but if you're already on Google and you want to stay there, this is probably going to be your best bet. So I'm going to install this plugin. It's going to make me, uh, you know, opt in a couple times here. So I've opted in, I will opt in again and continue to install. I'll go ahead and install it for all users. This is pretty much the same flow for installing like any custom plugin into Zoho CRM. And now we will land on the installation page. So this is gonna go for a little bit. We're gonna pause here and we'll jump back in once that is completed. All right, so this is now done and it's gonna just require a couple more steps to really make it work. So first thing we'll need to do, we gotta do our OAuth, our handshake, right? That is where we get this little pop-up and we choose success and we allow it, All right? And that takes care of the initial handshake. So we can finish that component. Now, a few more things we need to do. We'll need to go into the settings here. So it auto-directed me, but that's under settings in the Google Drive. A couple things. So this first field is either gonna be a zero or a one. Um, this actually refers to inside of Google Drive, wherever you want all this data to land. So for me, I have this set up in my drive. So for me, I would put a zero here. If you want this all to point to a team drive, 
which uh, a lot of people would want, you just do this with a one. So it's really just a little decision. This second field, the Google root folder ID, refers to the specific folder in that drive where you want all this data to land. So I've created one called Zoho CRM, and I can just grab this, uh, you know, long string here at the end of the URL bar. So starting at one, ending in seven in this example. And I'll click next. Now we can choose which modules we want to affect this integration. So leads, accounts, contacts, and deals. All of these are essentially going to get a top level folder, right? So in this Zoho CRM tab, we'd have accounts, deals, contacts, leads as subfolders. For deals, we can actually create it within the corresponding account folder. I recommend you do that. It just keeps things a little cleaner so that you go to the account and then you see all the deals and you can go into each of those and see the particular files. We can also choose what the name should be of each folder. It chooses pretty logical ones, right? Names, name of account, name of deal, name of contact. So we'll go ahead and leave those. We'll click save. So now our settings are set up. The integration has been installed. How does it actually look when we turn it on? So if we go into accounts and we go into just any old example account here, um, what we'll see is that on the left-hand side, we now have a related list for Google Drive files that lives down here at the bottom. Now, for all of your existing accounts, these folders will not be created automatically, right? So what we need to do is update those values using the Add File to Google Drive button. So that's right under here, under our custom buttons and under Add File to Google Drive. So if we look on this, the Gmail side or the Google Drive side, I'll give this a quick refresh so you see um, there's nothing in this Zoho CRM folder right now. When I click this add file to uh, Google, we'll spin, it will spin. Now let's say I don't even add a file. I just clicked the button. Um, now over here on the uh, Google Drive side, if I give this a refresh, um, we should have a folder for accounts and underneath that, a folder for Zanata LLC the specific account and nothing within that folder. So now if I go back and let's say I add a file, let's say I've got a logo. So I'm gonna add a file and I'll add my logo through this little pop-up. We'll see that it's uploading, uploading, and now that file is here and I can close out. So now when I give this a refresh, we should see in that Google Drive related list that we have some attachments now. Nice thing about this is that these attachments don't actually live in Zoho CRM, so you don't have to pay for the CRM storage, and you can still access them from directly on the record here. Now, you might be asking, okay, that's that's great and all, but what happens if we do this from the other side? So let's say I were to add like a W9 folder to this uh, specific folder here on Google. Now, when I come back over to CRM and I give this a refresh, we should be able to see both of those files now, right? So even if you added it natively just through Google, um, we're still good to go. We're still going to be able to access any of those files that are relevant to us here inside of CRM. So we've got the W9 and we have the logo. So that pretty much covers it there for the you know Google Drive integration, right? It's going to cover create a folder for each of the relevant modules and each record in that module where you'll be able to use your files pretty much interchangeably between the two systems uh, without any issue. So that should pretty much wrap it up here for this video. We're able to cover the Gmail, Google Calendar, Google Contacts, and Google Drive integrations. I do hope that you found this useful. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe down below because that really does help us out. If you have any comments, questions, or feedback, please leave that in the comment section below as we try to read and respond to each and every one of those on our weekly podcast, Azaz. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.